they're in a boat with a number of divine personages. It's that boat that will eventually take the king in different forms of that boat that will take the king through the 12 stages or the 12 hours of the night. The symbolism of a boat on the water demonstrates the consciousness being led through our mysterious interaction with the flow of time, through the landscape of the duet. Through the hours of the night towards its conclusion, a new dawn and a new day. Here, the constant flow of time is symbolized as a river, which gently, inexorably leads the inhabitants of the boat through the stages of transformation. The, the Christian conception of hell with all its demons and its hellfire is in all likelihood derived from the, from the Egyptian, but the Egyptian didn't go into, didn't revel in all the details of the smell of the roasting flesh and the pain of the hacked bodies. Rather, they were expressing, basically what the Egyptians were doing was, was say it was, declaring that the souls of those who hadn't done their inner work or who obstructed those who were trying to do their inner work ended up in oblivion. In other words, their names, their identities were obliterated. They weren't consigned to the roasting flames of hell forever, but rather non-existence was considered punishment enough. In the fourth hour, the actual coffin is shown descending into the earth, a schematic that actually represents the tombs themselves. See the coffin in red, the larval forms in front of it, and the coffin is actually going to its final resting place. In the fifth hour, the coffin over here has come to its final rest at the, in the bowels of the earth. This is the birth of the new sun god in the depths of the earth, the life force bursting from the egg, forces the earth above into a bulge. At the nadir of the descent of the solar principle, life bursts from its egg with the potential of rejoining the solar source. The winged serpents no doubt are meant to symbolize this potentiality in one form or another. The egg of Sokar represents the final, the, the most inanimate state of matter. It's the, it's the bowels of the earth. But in the egg itself is spirit, the hawk-headed Sokar, holding apart, again, with the winged spirit and this mysterious triple-headed serpent with the deity at the other end. But the power of imminent life within it, in other words, this, is the, this represents the power of life to reascend and become spirit, actually forces a bulge in the earth above it. Still in the register above that, there's a mound of earth on either side, two birds representing Isis and Nephthys, and a scarab underneath, buried in the earth, pulling the tow rope that's attached to the solar bark, forward and upward. And the sign all the way up above is the little one, the little sign way up here represents heaven. In other words, the, 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 the power of the, the entire enterprise is pulling the boat, is, is pulling the boat heavenward. It's from its, from its, 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 its resting place up eventually through its stages of transformation to the heavens. This is the culminant moment of a life well lived. The consciousness rooted in heaven using the fulcrum of a higher dimension pulls the lower register to the upper, a bridge, a ladder to the realm of the netter. It is here that we have successfully transmuted physical matter to divine. The summation and consequence of our inner work. In the ninth hour, the boat now continues with a number of mysterious, um, more mysterious symbols. Kepri, the scarab beetle on the top, is now rolling its egg forward. Its eggs, of course, with its own, with its own um, future enshrined within. The two, the, 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 the sun rises between two serpents. On the archetypal register, we see a symbolic depiction of the higher processes at work. The beetle rolling its egg towards the sun symbolizes the great work, the creation of a higher consciousness. Next to this, we see another representation of a risen sun between two standing snakes. 
This may be a depiction of a new consciousness accomplished through the risen Kundalini, symbolized by the standing snakes. The snakes are crossed, perhaps indicating a harmonious interworking between the hemispheres. The crowns on the twins symbolize the solar and lunar principles, which creates another strong symbolic link with the functions and attributes of the left and right brains. If this weren't enough, a further clue reveals itself hidden in the geometry and negative space of the grouping. When compared to an overlay of the human skull, its full meaning becomes more apparent. The risen sun of the higher consciousness appears at the site of the third eye. Precisely the point at which the Egyptians depicted the risen Kundalini cobra in their various statuary and sculpture. The twins each have a hand raised to their heads. They appear to be thinking or drawing attention to the head. Further indication of the cerebral nature of the hieroglyph. To the right of that is what seems like a depiction of balance, perhaps indicative of the stability achieved through harmony and balance of the poles of consciousness. In the 11th hour, the process is almost complete. The bark is being towed forward. The, the, the rope itself now takes the form of the gigantic coiled serpent. The personifications of the hours are transporting or preceding the boat. And once again, this is Mehen, the enveloper, probably the origin of our, of our familiar figure of speech, the coils of time. Up in the top register, emphasized in red, a small divine figure riding on a serpent in the company of, 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 of ten stars. In other words, this is the serpent in the sky. This is intellect made divine or the serpent representing duality. Once again, uh, uniting with or this is, uh, 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 duality reconciled or a new one and the the, the, legged, the legged winged serpent now appears up in the upper register between the two eyes of the, the solar and the lunar eyes of, of, um, of Ra. In hour 11, we see the united hemispheres become the androgyne. The solar and lunar principle fuse together. This powerful and sacred symbolism has echoed through history and strong correlations can be seen between these hieroglyphic symbols and many later depictions of the alchemical stage represented by the androgene and its divine offspring. This inspiring moment seems to indicate a mastery over the coils of time, perhaps indicative of a timeless period in which the higher consciousness of the deceased can reside with the gods. In the twelfth hour, the process is complete. <clears throat> the bark, now with a scarab beetle in the front, is being towed th through the backbone of this enormous serpent, which Valad Lubitsch thought was a parallel to the Kundalini energy of the Hindus, in which the which lies coiled at the base of the spine. Any real technology for navigation through the wheels of the afterlife might also include a gate for a return to physical incarnation. The cycle returns to where it began. And here, this is a parallel expression of the, 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 the bark of transformation passing through or, or releasing the Kundalini energy. And this results in a new sun in the scarab beetle pushing the associated with the, the head of the dead king, which is associated with the new sun, pushing its way through the earth into, a, into immortality, actually. In other words, it's a, another expression of the, the pyramid text, Ba and Ka unite, become a star, join the company of Ra, and sail with him across the sky in his boat of millions of years. It's a similar parallel. This is, this is the same teaching expressed in New Kingdom terminology in this extraordinarily complex text.